All right, everybody. Hey, how are we doing, everybody? Welcome to the show. Welcome to Comedy from Home Sweet Home. Big round of applause, big round of applause, big round of applause. Yeah. I know what we're all thinking. The vice presidential debate just started. What are we doing here? It's the hot topic. Everyone wants to talk about it. What are they going to say, right? Yeah. You guys don't believe that. You're a bunch of fucking liars. Uh, this is a comedy open mic show. Boy, oh boy, do we have a packed show for you tonight. You see what happened was something intellectual and important happening, so everyone decided to come out and drink and do comedy instead. That's the set we're dealing with, guys. But it's going to be a good show, which means I have to speed through my horse shit because there's so many people tonight, and they're all so much better than me. So you guys ready to get this thing started? All right, unfortunately, we are going to start my horse shit, though, because it's sort of like my only time to get out and do anything. Uh, let's see, what do I start with? Oh, hey, this is weird. I've had a bad couple days. Uh, who's the most uncomfortable person I make eye contact with this world? Ma'am, I caught my dick shaving last night. Yeah. I was upstairs, and I was like, I'm going to surprise my wife. So I started shaving my dick. Well, surprise. I cut my dick shaving. Now here's the thing. When it started bleeding, I didn't make a noise. I just bit my lip and I was silent. And for five minutes I was like, I'm gonna die up here. I'm gonna die here, but at least my wife won't know why. I mean, she'll know why when she finds my bloody corpse and my dick half hanging off. But I won't have to know that she knows. I'll be gone before that happens. It was very painful. And then it stopped, and now it's fine. Except when I pee, it shoots out of the bottom. Is that weird? Is that un... Do people not like it? And if you think cutting your dick while shaving hurts, you should have felt it when I put on the aftershave. Especially because you have to slap it on. Hey! There's a dad joke for you. Reminder, I have two kids. Uh, <laughs> they're too young for me to tell slapping aftershave on my dick jokes to, but I still write them. Uh, Boy, hey, so like I said, tonight's the vice presidential debate. Everyone, uh, I know you're fake excited for that. But it is going to be a weird contrast. Last week we went from, uh, or the last debate, we went from there eating the pets. And I assume during this debate they'll talk about how all the pets have drowned. Or as us Irish folks call it, cooking. <laughs> That's a joke about how bad Irish people are at cooking. A lot of boiling meat. Do you eat a lot of Irish food? No one does. You know all that food you eat on St. Patty's Day? It's fucking British. That's how bad Irish food is. All that shit's British food. Isn't that cool? All right. No fans of Ireland in here. Uh, Tim Waltz is going to be on the stage. Tim Waltz has this uh, charming story. He, uh, he told the media that he married his wife on the date of Tiananmen Square so that he would never forget Tiananmen Square. That's a hard one. Like, I'm a married dude. When you get married, you get like one, maybe if you have a huge dick or a big bank account, two concessions in a wedding. And asking for a specific date's a big one. And that's a hard pitch. Joanne, listen. On April 19th, 38 college students were massacred by the red Chinese communist government. And I don't ever want to forget that. Just like I'll never forget that I love you. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, J.D. Vance is weird. I guess he is. But that's a weird story, dude. J.D. Vance is weird. J.D. Vance, uh, to me, looks like a Hallmark movie villain. I don't know how else to explain it. He just seems like a guy that came in and he just bought the school for the blind and now he's going to shut it down and turn it into an Amazon warehouse. All right. When you guys weren't excited about the debate, I should have known not to even try anything. Uh, I live in a neighborhood with a lot of cops. A lot of cops on my street. There's a, a canine cop up the road for me. And every now and then I'm walking my dog and the guy and the canine cop, he's a guy with him. It's not, the dog doesn't own a house. I just want to make that clear. Um, every now and then the, guy, the cop and his dog are out like getting the mail. And I'm walking my dog and then my dog starts barking at him. And I'm like, hey, hey man, chill. It is your First Amendment right, but he will still arrest you and we'll have to solve it later. I'm afraid my dog will attack that dog because it's, you know, assaulting an officer. I made that joke to the neighbor and he's like, that's true. That would be actually assaulting an officer if you hit the dog. Dog started humping my leg. 
I tried to get him for sexual misconduct, but unfortunately there was no clear precedent saying that he couldn't hump my leg, so it's qualified immunity. The dog got off. <laughs> that joke killed when I submitted it to the New Yorker magazine. <laughs> All right. Well, none of this has worked, so I probably am not going to try this. Actually, I'm going to try this because fuck it. Why not alienate everybody here? Uh, I was talking to my mother the other day. She reminded me of uh, this story in middle school. I got kicked out of gym and couldn't do gym for the rest of ninth grade because I got the gym teacher so mad he wanted to fight me. My gym teacher was like an old fat guy. He looked kind of like uh, Tim Waltz, actually. Um, He's an old fat guy, and when you know when you do the scoliosis test, you guys remember the scoliosis test? Remember how that works? You have you bend over, and then they put a ruler on your back to see if your spine's straight. It got to me, and I told the coach, I said, I ain't gay. He's like, I'm not gay either. So you're only trying to get me to bend over in front of you and touch my toes, dude. <laughs> and then I needled the guy for two weeks about it, about how he's gay. And he threw a desk through a window. I still don't know how to run a mile. Never learned it. <laughs> knew this wouldn't work. I knew it wouldn't work and I said I knew I shouldn't do it, but you know what? I ain't gay. I know my black comics feel me, right Scotty? Yes. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, I'll finish on that, guys. We have so much to get through tonight. Your very first comic, he's so old, he was alive before gay people were real. <laughs> That's just a fact. I didn't make that up, it's real. Uh, Put your hands together for Mike Marr. I got cups there if you need them. Okay. Pea cup. Whatever you need cup for, Mike. A pea cup. Come yeah. on, Santa Claus. Yeah. All right. Hey, so yeah. Uh, hey, have you ever, uh, have you ever wake up feeling so great, so fantastic, that you want to shout out? I'm going to make me a brand new universe today. No? Nobody? Okay. So, so I'm dragging my metaphorical cross here tonight. Yeah. And along the way, 12 people gathered. Yeah. And one guy says, like, dude, you definitely got that Einstein vibe. I said, I know, right? Jesus Christ, this cross is heavy. Does anybody want a selfie of the face? Come on, Albert Einstein. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, let's all do uh, supper on Sunday. And by the way, wash your own damn feet. Smell you later. Hey, but it gets crazier. My wife is even reminded of Einstein in the bedroom because I come at the speed of light. Had a bang, yeah. Yeah, and she's screaming, God, 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 oh God! And she asked, was that the second coming? Yeah, okay. Now she calls me short pump. Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, talk about a big bang theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how I became agnostic, so just so you know, yeah. Phew, that was a lot, let me tell you. Nap time. <sighs> Clear, I'm back, I'm back. Yep, okay. Uh, you know, speaking of Einstein, everyone says, with age comes wisdom. But honestly, the older I get, Okay, 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 yeah. Clear! Clear! <laughs> yeah, but honestly, the older I get, the more I realize it's just selective hearing and pretending to be a know-it-all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, last week, driving to my family reunion, I had an epiphany. And it turns out I feel Einstein stumbled across the theory of relativity when he was trying to get as far away from his relatives as possible. Yeah, and he also realized that time slows down when you talk to your relatives. Like, when I talk to my Aunt Ruth, she's been dead for 10 years. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, the scary, let's see, uh, the speaking of uh, slowing down time, nothing does that quite like being married. Yeah. And I mean, they say marriage adds years to your life, but I think it's the constant nagging that makes it feel like forever. She's got a mouth like a motorboat. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Scientists say that the uh, universe is only made of 5% matter. Yeah, can you guess what the other 95% is? Nagging. That's right. Nagging, yeah. That's what's expanding the universe. Yeah. When I listen to my wife, I hear only about 5% of what she says. So, uh, that supports my theory. How much nagging can one universe take? Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, I like to think I'm good at math, like Einstein, but uh, I quickly realize I'm better at drinking. Yeah, and my version of E, e equals MC squared, ever clear equals me seeing double. You've been great. My name's Mike Moore. Thank you. Mike Moore, everybody, apologizing because you didn't see me with the light. But that's okay, folks. If you're Mike Moore's age, you're usually looking for the Grim Reaper. You get it? It's another joke about Mike Moore being close to death. He has a new grandchild they'll never meet. Uh, why am I being this way? Why am I doing that? That's not fun, is it? It's because I have a cut dick, that's why. And I don't mean like circumcision. I mean, well, you get what I mean. You were here. I mean, you know. You know, we were there together, you and I, when I cut my dick. Uh, all right, your next, uh, your next uh, guy, uh, unlike me, he doesn't have a purple heart, but he is in the armed services. Everybody put your hands together for Chris Sipple. You know, if you would have used the lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped, you might not have cut your dick. I don't get the eight benefits. No, you can use Home Sweet Home to get 20% off on uh, manscaped.com for the lawnmower 4.0. Uh, don't cut your dick. Uh, let's be honest, is it okay if I put my book here? We all good there? All right, cool. Um, just checking. Uh, I'm really appalled that I've been playing uh, Mario or Donkey Kong 64 this entire time, and Diddy's been throwing barrels of uh, baby oil. <laughs> but shopping for like uh, baby oil now, I feel like am I safe to actually buy the amount that I've been buying and take it up to the register without being put on a watch list? Or if I just say no Diddy, I'm okay. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> No, it was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. Um, yeah, no, totally, it was worth it. No ditty. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've never had a bidet, but I'm, I'm tempted to buy a, a uh, bidet now at this point because I'm really tired of doing handstands in the shower. I'm really running out of uh, native body wash too fast to soap my ass and do that handstand. Uh, I feel like owning a bidet, like, it's... It's almost like as, uh, when I first actually buy one, it's going to be like hearing a sound in the middle of the night when you're home alone in your house. You're scared, but you're kind of curious. Yeah, that's how I know. It's, it's very silent, and then that water sprays in your ass, and I'm going to be like, oh, hey. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm glad, that some, I'm glad you clapped for that. All right. Um, I thought we couldn't get any lower as a country when we heard the phrase, they're eating the pets. But then yesterday I saw an interview about the hurricane. This woman in North Carolina said that the government is creating storms such as hurricanes in the middle of the ocean and then sending them over the border to attack our country. A hurricane isn't a migrant. At least they're American made though. All right, that one had better somewhere else, I guess. <laughs> Somebody on YouTube is going to be like, racist. Racist. <laughs> no, the government's not creating hurricanes, because if they did, they would name them like AR-15 hurricanes. <laughs> Let's be real. Hurricanes and the weather are like birds. They're not real. 
<laughs> um, I'm tired of like, I, I feel like that Christians give women too much shit about wearing miniskirts all the time. It's like, did you see what Jesus was wearing on the cross when he died? I think they're good. Just Google that picture, I promise. You're gonna be like, I understand. <laughs> Uh, recently, my mom has been dating a lot, but I'm not one of those like kid, like children that are like, oh, mom, don't date, you know. I encourage my mom to date. After like a hard work week, she'll like her and I will text, and I'll send her a text, be like, she's going on a date. You're a bad bitch. Go get that dick appointment. You deserve it. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm fucking. That. Yeah, straight. No, I tell my mom straight up, fucking go get that dick appointment. No, she she does. I make sure she does. The guy comes over. I fucking chaperone her to him. <laughs> no, but I, I found out this dude was a Marine, and then I did like a little like pie chart comparison in my head, and I was like, uh, this guy's a Marine. He was killing people to send souls to God. My dad was a Christian, just telling people, don't be gay. <laughs> This, uh, this guy owns his own business. My dad's shopped in a few businesses before. This guy owns a Harley. My dad has owned a Huffy. There's a big difference there. Oh, great, I feel like I'm running out of jokes, shit. <laughs> uh, orgies, I feel like orgies are easier than three ways. Uh, that because orgies, you can, you're kind of on your own time, you can just finish and then go back to watching your YouTube video. On a three-way, you're fucking for two people. You're trying not to come before your friend does. You don't want to let him down because you don't want to be the bad guy in that three-way. The three-way is a golden rule. Like you said. Uh, but at the same time, it's like you're fucking for... Okay. <laughs> I'll end it there. He's mad at my edge. He's mad that I said don't cut your dick with a lawnmower. Um, <laughs> I would make a three-way awkward because I would... Eiffel Tower, that's when you uh, high-five the person you're fucking with. I would just go in for a fist bump and they'd go in for the high-five like I would do a fist bump or a handshake, just make it awkward. That's been my time. I am Chris Lippa. Thank you. Gotta love a guy who says, I'll end there, and then goes into another joke. I thought guys in the military are supposed to follow orders, but I guess not. Uh, all right, that was uh, Chris Sipple. Give it up for him or you hate America. All right. Your next comic isn't quite here yet, so I'm going to do a switcheroo and bring up one of your late night stars. Everybody put your hands together for Johnny James. What's up, cool kids? My name is John. I'm from New York City. Shit like that, bro. Um... How can I start this? Let's think. Um, first things first. I guess I'm, I'm from New York. You know what I'm saying? I, I just got here uh, yesterday to celebrate my, my grandma's birthday, which is this week. She just turned 77, real lit. Um, coming here, I experienced my first Karen incident. Uh, word, as I was getting off the plane, I hear this lady. Uh, yelling at the man, you know what I mean? A good old Delta man behind the counter. And then all of a sudden you hear someone yell, Shut up, bitch! <laughs> Everyone at the terminal started laughing. The Delta man started laughing. Karen's not laughing. I also don't find it funny because I was the one who said it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just got here, bro. Word up. Um, but it's cool being, it, it's pretty boring out here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, try, I try to get out, you know, meet people and shit like that. Um, I live out, or I, my family lives out in a Hopewell area, Prince George area, middle of nowhere area and shit like that. So I'm, I'm trying to like, I guess, use these apps to like meet people and shit like that. And uh, woo, the people you guys got out here, some type of... The demographic, right? <laughs> shit. I found myself swiping to a point that the shit said, Welp, that's it. <laughs> Welp? <laughs> the shit says, uh, widen your parameters or lower your standards. So I was like, wow. That was fucked up, bro. But um, it's crazy. Some of these, these pages that these girls have, they'll say crazy things on it. Like, 
Um, I don't like a man who's cheap. I want a man who's a big spender, who likes to travel. And it's like, first off, I am not cheap, bitch. I am broke. There is a difference. This is an economic issue, you feel me? I'm not choosing to spend like this, you know what I mean? Uh, they'll say these things. I've seen one that says dating me is like, and they have a little box, and in it you get to fill it out with whatever you want. And these girls will put things like, dating me is like biting into an oatmeal raisin cookie and finding out it's chocolate chip. And then an hour later, that it's an edible. <laughs> or they'll say, dating me is like winning the lottery. Whenever I see a girl with a page and it just says dating me is like winning the lottery, I like to bring up the very serious demographic of men who commit suicide shortly after winning the lottery. Not to mention those that go fucking broke within a year. It's all true shit. She may be telling the truth, guys. These type of women either come with really good pussy, really bad mental problems, sometimes both. And that's a gamble I'm willing to bet on, you feel me? Um... <laughs> uh, what else is new? Well, I've been going to the gym. You feel me? Working out. Because the last girl that I was uh, intimate with, she put her hands around my arms and her fucking fingers touched on the other side. It's like, it's like, it's like. My arms aren't that small. Let's just say, I felt very safe in her grasp. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Um, after this week, I get to go back to my, my crib and see what the roaches have done with my apartment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, when you're gone for a minute, they just start moving furniture and shit. And the roaches in my apartment are huge. They're so big, when I kill them, I feel bad. You know what I'm saying? They were someone. There was once a time I went to go step on one and I heard it go, mm, before I crushed it. Grunting? Oh, man. It's nuts. Um, what else can I tell you guys? Oh, so I, I, I travel back and forth a lot because I am an actor. And um, recently, uh, I found out about this app called Raya. It's a dating app that's strictly for people in the entertainment business. And you could only become a part of this is by getting three people to vouch for you in the entertainment business. Now, I have a couple cool famous friends, but I don't want to holler at the only famous people I know to tell them that I'm having trouble getting bitches and I need them to sign me up and vouch for me. You know what I'm saying? But um, we'll see how that goes. But thank you guys so much for having me. I'm Jonathan James. Jonathan James, everybody, keep it going for him. All the way from New York City. I hear that's to the north of us. Your next comic coming to the stage, boy oh boy, is this guy good. He's one of the best comics on the show tonight, so if you stuck around this long, are you in for a treat, everybody? Not to put too much pressure on him, this guy is really the reason we do this show. The only reason that there's a comedy scene in this city at all is all resting on this man's strong, masculine, and can I say very attractive, uncut penis shoulder. Put your hands together for the Adonis of Comedy. Judd Howard! I'm the Thanos of comedy! Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, really, I really like how uh, Jacob is definitely Irish because I've never seen him wear pants, but his legs never get any more tan. Um, Y'all like cum jokes? Yeah. A lot of cum jokes tonight. Uh, Diddy was caught with a thousand bottles of baby oil and 728 dildos, but uh, Costco said that they don't sell baby oil in that amount. So the police tested it. It turns out it was DMT. I want to know how you cram 728 dildos into your third eye. I want to know how you stuff 728 dildos into the hole you just created in your own universe. I think Diddy parties sound like a blast, honestly. Yeah. Honestly, it sounds fucking great. Just a bunch of lubed up people sliding around. Like a real life game of snakes and ladders. Like where you gotta make it to the end without being too gay. You know? You hit that big black snake at the end and you just slide right on down back to homosexuality. Um, 
I was browsing Amazon looking for a cover for my Bible. So I typed in dildo um, and then sort by octopus. And I realized that Amazon sold 1,000 of these in the last month to one person. I started reading the reviews and there were some pretty sketchy names. Like one of them, there was like a great tentacle review by Mrs. Puff. It's like a Diddy Entendre or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I am asexual, deviant. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk later, Big Scotty. Um, uh, I'm getting really into uh, eating my own cream pies now. Yeah. Because a, because a chef always tastes his creations. I just recently stopped being just a delivery guy. <laughs> now I like my pussy like barbecue with a lot of mesquite in it. <laughs> um, I, I don't really like uh, cream pie porn because I don't like spoiling the ending. <laughs> I also really never make it that far. Um, my favorite, my favorite kind of, I'm a, I'm a bit of a porn aficionado. My, my favorite kind of porn has to be uh, POV. Yeah, thank you. No. Nice, nice boots, dude. <laughs> you look like you like to be tied up by a priest. <laughs> party at the top, party in the back. <laughs> Um, my favorite kind of porn definitely has to be POV. It's a point of view, but it has to be doggy. And it, it has to be from the woman's point of view. The priest going to try you up. I just like, I just like looking around apartments, I guess. Um, growing up, my parents wouldn't let me watch a lot of, uh, like, stuff. They wouldn't let me watch a lot of movies. I grew up very religious. Um, they wouldn't let me watch... Um, the Lion King because Timon and Pumbaa were gay. <laughs> so my parents made me watch this show called Veggie Tales, which is literally just a bunch of singing and dancing fruits. <laughs> and now I have a fruit fetish. So if anyone wants to whistle viral verses into my ear while I get pegged with a cucumber, I'm down with that. Um, also tonight, learned the golden rule. I never learned this in church, but the golden rule is it's not gay if it's in a three-way. Thank you. That's my time. Where did Jacob back up here? Chad Howard, everybody. If you haven't caught on, we are getting paid by the National Ad Council to tell everyone it's not gay if it's a three-way. Uh, it's a sponsorship deal we're doing tonight. Uh, and, and just to point out, uh, I don't want to bring it back to my own failed joke, but Timon and Pumbaa, no scoliosis. Um, small moments. All right, your next comic, you know him for being the guy who was sitting at the table with the people who are here to watch the show. Now, just so you know, you see all these other people? If you leave right after Prashant's set, we're all going to judge him for it. The rule is you wait for... Let me see who's after him. You wait for at least two, okay? All right, perfect. The third guy, fuck them. Your next comic coming to the stage is such a nice guy, I've been mispronouncing his name for four months and he never corrected me. I figured it out on my own. Put your hands together for Prashant Adele. What's up, home sweet home? How y'all doing tonight? Hell yeah, baby. Good things are happening in my life. Good things are happening in my life. That's right. Good, you heard it. Good things are happening in my life. I am auditioning for Top Gun 3. That's right. I'm auditioning for Top Gun 3 as one of the fighter pilots, you know? Call name Isis. That's right. So, I was watching news the other day. I wasn't watching news the other day. 
And this journalist went up to Kamala Harris and was like, Hey Kamala Harris, what temperature do you cook your turkey? She said 300 degrees for four hours. That's so fucking sexist, dude. I get it, she's a woman, but why are you asking about her cooking skills? I want to know about fucking policies. Israel and Gaza are going fucking crazy. The fuck you gonna do about it? Israel is going crazy. The fuck you gonna do about it? She'll probably say 300 degrees for four hours. It's a slow burner. If you don't get it, it's all right. That's right, that's right. Any month there is any significance attached to it, I'd really like to learn about that month. For instance, February, I think about black people. Yeah! What's up, brothers? You know? Hello. Damien, that's my brother. <laughs> this, <laughs> it just works out. I don't know, it surprises me every time. It just works out like, God damn. December, I think about Christians. It's Jesus Christ's birthday. Give it up for JC, y'all. Let's go. Give it up for JC. And October, I think about titties. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, y'all. Please get your titties checked, ma'am. By far my favorite month. That's right. So, secrets are so good. Secrets are so good. <laughs> Bonnie, you know, secrets are so good. Why are they so good? Like anything that happens over here, we just step outside and put that tip to your lips. It's so good. It's so good that you die. It's so fucking good that you die. You get lung cancer and you die. I have a solution, y'all. It's pretty out there. It's pretty out there, I'm telling you right now. I have a solution. Instead of aborting babies, let's harvest them. Instead of aborting babies, let's harvest them. See, you're saving the baby. First thing. A few years down the line, you got to know your grandma has been smoking like a motherfucker and now needs a lung. Now it's your choice. Are you pro-life, pro-choice, or pro-harvest? You saved twice. There's a special place in heaven for you. You know? So, uh, let me get biblical, y'all. Let me get biblical. Do you all believe in second coming? In Christianity, there is uh, a belief that Jesus Christ is going to come again and it's going to be a judgment day. If you all don't know, first time when he came in, he was the coolest motherfucker. He hung out with hookers, forgave the robbers and died for our sins. That's a cool guy. Now the second time they're saying like, oh, all the sinners are going to die. All these gay people are going to die. I don't believe that, dude. I really don't believe that. A gay person comes up to heaven and JC is going to be like, what the fuck? What are you doing here? He's like, I got stoned. He's like, God damn, you get high and died? That is fucking crazy. That is fucking crazy. <laughs> All right, y'all, that's my time. Give it up for your Jacob. I give it up for my friends for going through this. Prashant Adel, with a classic joke about the death of our Lord right at the end there. Gotta love that. I forgot to tell you, the funniest thing to do would have been if you got up during his set and walked out. Then we all would have thought you were fucking legends. That would have been hilarious. Your next comic would never come up with an idea as funny as that. Never. Also, watch his fight videos on YouTube. Everybody, put your hands together for Scotty Moore. Home, sweet home. How in the fuck are y'all doing tonight? 
Yeah? Yeah? He scared y'all. He said I fight, right? I can't really fight. I promise you, I can't really fight. I fight a little bit. I fight a little bit. I fight a little bit. God. First and foremost, uh, I heard him mention that Damien's his brother, and he didn't mention me. That's because I identify as a white comic, so... <laughs> Fuck you too, man. ISIS. Um. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm glad to be at home, sweet home. This looks like my house. <laughs> this looks like some shit I did to my walls. I used to always do shit like this around my house. Especially put that, that big shit up. What's that say? KB what? KB? No, that's K Bay. Oh, damn. I know black people don't like to read anyway. Um. <laughs> you know who did what? That's, well, you're not all the black people. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get on into it, man. Anybody from the military? No, nobody fuck with the military? I wouldn't either, especially if Donald Trump was about to be our fucking president. I wouldn't fuck with that motherfucker either. I would not fuck with the military. And do not be fooled by these dog tags. My mama gave me these shits. <laughs> My mama gave me these dog tags, cause she was in the Navy. Now, I'm kind of surprised how she got in the Navy, but I'm more surprised of how she got out the Navy. She told me she got out because they gave her some type of honorable discharge. Now, at first, I did not know what the fuck that was at all. I had no idea what that was. So when she first told me, I was like, ew. <laughs> I was like, can't you take a pill for that? Like, <laughs> nasty. Oh, man. I'm having a hard time dating. Anybody else dating? Y'all two together? Oh, okay, I'm gonna fuck it up for you. No, I'm just <laughs> He looking like, bro, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. I, I actually just broke up with my girlfriend. We was having issues. Yeah, I know. We was having issues. The issues that me and her were having was I noticed that every time we took a picture, she always had on the same pants. And it was really good on my fucking nerves. She was wearing the pants like the one with the bell bottles, with the wedge in her ass crack, because it made her ass look fat. And she wore them pants every time we went out. Wore them pants to a restaurant, wore them pants to a fucking dinner. She wore them pants with a wedding ring I didn't give her. Okay, that shit was funny when I told her the last time. Fuck y'all. Um, <laughs> I mean, one time I was talking to my friend about it because I wanted to see how can I address her about it, you know what I'm saying? Because it was getting on my nerve. And she heard, overheard us talking about her pants. Cause she heard that I gave her a nickname. I called her Dickies. And uh, she kicked me out of the house. She kicked me out of the house. I felt bad. So I tried to invite her over to my house. Cause I cooked dinner. She was like, okay, I'm gonna pull up. She came to my house looking sexy as fuck. But she had them same damn pants on. It was just pissing me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the late laugh. <laughs> that shit was later than what the times I'd be at work, shit. That was a, that was a tardy laugh, what the fuck? <laughs> was that a lunch break laugh? Or what kind of laugh? <laughs> oh man, first and foremost, uh, sweetheart, I'm gonna pick on you for a second. You're the first Asian I've seen at home, sweet home. I fucks with you. I fuck, she, she is the first Asian I've seen at home, sweet home. I fuck with you. No, real talk, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Just like they say black don't crack, I always say this phrase, Asian don't raisin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Please don't do no Taekwondo before I leave, I promise you. <laughs> she gonna beat my ass. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, that's a liquor talking. Don't the please don't kick my ass. I, and I fuck with septum. I got you. I got you. I was finally on time for once. <laughs> oh, man. You gotta realize, man, I feel like you gotta be careful what you tell people because people don't understand everything that you tell them. Like, there's so many different words that mean the same thing. Like, I told my homeboy, he can go ahead and borrow my car as long as he bring it back with gas. This fucker still brought my car back on an empty tank, but he had a bag full of weed in there. That's real? It was. I said, what kind of shit? I said, what kind of gas did you get? He says, I got that mid and I got that Vin Diesel. Like, <laughs> I got so mad, I smoked all his shit. And then I forgot, <laughs> I forgot about why I was mad. 
So I made the best decision of my life. I said, you can keep the car. My name is Scott Moore. You can find me on Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and church studies, man. My name is Scott Moore. God bless. Scott Moore, everybody. That was one of the greatest moments in juxtaposition I've ever seen in this room. I've never seen an Asian in a home sweet home. I've thought with you, you can teach me Kung Fu. One second later, you gotta be careful what you say to people. They don't understand what you mean. That was wild, that was crazy. By the way, just so you know, there's been at least three other Asian people here. I think. I didn't do a blood test. Scotty wasn't here to take the samples. Uh, all right, I'm just kidding. Scotty doesn't know how to do blood samples. Uh, your next, I was supposed to say your next character. Yeah, uh, hey, you know what? Your next character, everybody. <laughs> Get ready to bring this wacky clown to the stage. You might recognize him from his starring role in every Adam Sandler film. Put your hands together for one of my favorite Rob Schneider creations. It's Big Chuck. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a wacky character. Uh, <laughs> I'm a leprechaun that eats farts. Can you handle that? <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay, not a wacky character crowd. That's fine. Yikes. Okay. Yeah, you know, I've been reading in the news. I hate you. Look at the news. It's all fitting all this, fitting all that. All my friends died of a fentanyl overdose. How come you don't ever hear about fitting all this dick in your mouth? <laughs> I got it now. Yeah. I got a big dick. I don't know. No, it's not big, but just small mouth. I don't know. Uh, with people with small mouths. Yeah, that's okay. Your dick is big if you get someone with a small mouth. I don't know. Uh, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, give me your farts! I'm gonna keep going back to that, the wacky leprechaun, until somebody laughs. Um, yeah, let's see. I, uh, I met somebody recently, they told me they were a Disney adult. You ever meet some of these people, Disney adults? Oh my god, I met someone, they said they were a Disney adult. I was like, what does that mean? They're like, I love Disney. Like, I watched Disney movies when I was a kid. That's my favorite thing. I love Disney movies, it's my favorite thing of all time. I was like, oh wow, that's your favorite thing? Uh, wait until you have sex. <laughs> You're gonna have a new favorite thing. <laughs> It'll be called a sex adult. I don't know. Um, that's uh, I do drugs sometimes. I like to do drugs sometimes, but um, I like to do drugs responsibly, which I, th that makes me feel like I, I ha I'm like in a middle weird middle ground, right? Because it's like. Like, I'll do acid, but I need to set aside, like, a weekend to do acid, right? I can't get with these... There's, there's these people who just will casually drop acid, right? Like, I've been to, like, a party, and someone's like, Hey, do you want to do acid? I was like, right now? I need to get somebody to watch my dog. Like, it's, He's going to be alone for 12 hours, because I'm not going near my dog when I'm on acid, because, like, I'm afraid if I'm on acid and I'm near my dog, I'm going to try to fuck him. <laughs> Cause I love my dog more than anything, and I don't know how that love will manifest itself when I, when I'm near him. No, and he has a big cock. I don't know. Uh, I, uh, my dad likes to do this thing. Sometimes I'll go to baseball games with my dad. He likes to point out all the players who are younger than me, right? Which was like cute the first time he did it, right? I was like 21. That's kind of quaint. There's like a 19-year-old guy in like the MLB. He's like, that guy's younger than you. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, right? Then he like, uh, but he still does that. I still go to baseball games with my dad sometimes. I'm like 32 now, so he's just like, you're older than that guy, you're older than that guy, the coach, you're older than him. He does that all the time. He likes to remind me of like who I'm older than and how much of a failure I am. Like, we'll be, you know, some pop star will be on the news. It's like some pop star, it's their 25th birthday. My dad's like, yeah, what did you do when you were 25, right? We go to a graveyard. There's someone who died when they were 17. He's like, yeah, this guy died when he was 17. What did you do? You tried, but you failed. <laughs> That's, uh, no, I, um, uh, I need to work on, I need to find a good way 
Like, I don't have a good way to tell someone that they like, we, you ever see someone and like they lost weight, right? And they look like they lost weight, but you can't say anything, right? Because if you tell somebody that they look like they lost weight, what you're saying underneath that is, hey, I remember you used to be a big fat pig person. <laughs> you probably worked really hard to lose that weight, but I remember, <laughs> I remember you fat piggy. Uh, that's what happens when you tell someone like, hey, you look like you lost weight. So that's like not a good thing to say. I ran into somebody like an old coworker recently and they had lost a lot of weight. And I had to say something because like when I see someone who looks different than they used to, even if I say nothing, my face just goes like. <laughs> so I see this person I haven't seen. I don't want to use their real name. So I see this person I used to work with. I go, oh, Marge. I go, oh, Marge. I can't say she, lo she looks like she lost weight. I go, oh, Marge, you look great. That's what I say. But then I'm like, now I'm complimenting a woman who's not my girlfriend, and that's not cool, so I have to change that. So I go, Marge, you look great. I don't want to fuck you. <laughs> and anyways, yeah, that's, so I, you know. <laughs> anyways, you guys, uh, you guys know about the Big Bang? Yeah, that's uh, when I had sex with your fat mother. <laughs> All of you guys have the same mother. She's fat, I fucked her, and that started the universe. All right. Thank you very much. My name is, uh, I, that has been the wacky character, Leprechaun Fart Eater. Thank you very much. Let's bring Jacob McFadden back up here. Leprechaun Fart Eater, everybody. Check him out on IMDb. Two credits and one writing role. Uh, your next comic coming to the stage is one of our comics who is here. He's doing an open mic in public for the very first time. And I put him up after Leprechaun Fart Eater, everybody. I don't know anything about your next comic. So based on, you know, looks alone, um, your next comic has a woman pinned to formaldehyde in his basement. Yo. That's impossible. It's a liquid. You guys are stupid. Put your hands together for Jose Vega. That is true, I agree with that. I gotta say, before, uh, before I sat down, there was, uh, there was a big aroma of what smelled like french fries downstairs, and now I'm really hungry. So I'm hoping as soon as this sets over, I just get to go out and just get some fries somewhere. Just a teeny bit hungry. Uh, before comedy, I was very shy. I was very in my shell. So, did lots of improv, did lots of stand-up with Coalition Theater. I fuck with them too. Yeah, they're nice. <laughs> so, lots of times I would stay in my car because I wouldn't want to mingle out with anybody. But lots of times it would be during the summer. So I'm sitting in my car with the windows up and I don't have the AC on. Because I, I didn't think all the way through yet. So I'm sweating just profusely. It's like the James River is just pulling, just pulling out of my, out of my armpits. So eventually I go to class and everyone's like, yo, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I just got out of the gym five minutes ago. A very long set, very long set. I work at a grocery store. Working in grocery stores is always fun. Get to meet with a lot of people. The first year of working there, I'm on a closing shift, I'm cleaning restrooms. And the manager in charge that night decides, you know what, there's no one else here I'm just gonna lock the door, turn on the alarm, and just go home. I was the last employee in the store. I come out, the alarm goes off, the manager comes back, the cops show up, and the cops go, uh, sir, do you work here? I'm like, yeah, I work here. Do you not see my apron? Do you not see my name tag? I look over at the boss and I'm like, yo, can you help me out here a little bit? Because I don't want to go to jail. I work here. At work, there's 
good days, bad days. And then there's those kinds of bad days when it starts off bad, but then it just suddenly just gets worse and worse as the day goes on. It's kind of like the movie Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, that movie scarred me. I saw that recently <laughs> for the first time. It was, it was not good. It was not good. So I'm working at the customer service desk for the first time. I'm not even working there for not even six months. The customer calls, he's like, hey, I need directions to your store. So I go, all right, well, just go down that street, make a left, make a right, the store will be on your right-hand side. He goes, all right, cool. And he hangs up, calls back, five minutes later, he's like, hey, uh, I can't find the store, where is it? So I'm just going back and forth with him constantly. But as I keep on going on, he just gets more and more pissed off at me to the point that he's just shouting in the phone, you can't give directions. So then I just break down just behind the desk. It, it, it wasn't good. Yeah, I know, it, it was not good. So I just get so frustrated. I just yank the phone out of the wall and I clock out for break finally. I'm like, yo, I can't do this anymore. It's not good. I was a very curious kid. At around five, five years old, I'm trying to pretend shave my pretend beard. Didn't go well. So I start to pretend shave. All of a sudden, I just cut myself just right on the chin. Just bleeds a little bit. I had to tell my aunt, hey, you're gonna need to bring me to the hospital. I, I can't, I need a Band-Aid. My name's Jose, thank you very much, everyone. Jose Vega, everybody, the villain from Command and Conquer. All right, uh, Jose, that was Jose's first set at an open mic. Thank you guys for being supportive during the set. Jose, welcome to the scene. You'll never find a more supportive or community-driven scene anywhere, obviously. Um, if it makes you feel better, everyone in this room is uh, full of hate for themselves, and that's why they wouldn't give you anything. All right. Uh, well, I, I hope you guys have more, more of that good spirit you were showing, that Southern hospitality for your next comic, everybody. Put your hands... No one's even pretending. All right, fuck it. Uh, everyone. You make me sick. You specifically make me sick. This guy was writing jokes during your entire set. Can you believe he's so disrespectful? Taylor, have you taken any comedy classes? Well, fuck you, he took two of them. You piece of shit, you should have laughed for him. He's your senior. Put your hands together for Bonnie Marie. Bonnie! Hill! Make them submit to you. <laughs> so Charlie was talking about people used to just like eat acid and go on with their day, and it really reminded me about how like 16 years ago, I used to love to eat acid and go to high school. Yeah. It really opened me up to my new addictions. Sooner or later, I was hooked on phonics. So, um, I fucking hate kids. Hell yeah. I think for me, it's that these, they're like these tiny little humans who can't do any sort of task correctly. I mean, for instance, would you look at the stitching on this shit? I mean, with those like, You'd think with those 16 hour long days and those like tiny nimble fingers, there'd at least be some sort of consistency down, but what the fuck do I know? <laughs> or the way they just cry and cry and cry. When you steal all that money from their lemonade stand, it's like, Jesus, Tommy, you're five now. It's time to push those feelings way deep down inside of you and get a real job like the rest of us. Though I have heard if you just like shake them enough, you can usually get that crying to stop pretty permanently. 
too. It's pretty nice. And also, I think they're kind of like terrifying. If I was alone in the woods, I would much rather run into that strange man or that bear over a small child any day. <laughs> Unless it was a baby, because then I could probably just feed it to the man or the bear. Problem solved. But there really isn't anything more terrifying than when you're alone in the woods and you hear that laughter of a small child coming from the woods after you've already drowned them. For some people, that joke takes a second to sink in. Cinder blocks really do help around the angles. I think worse than most people's kids, though, is the parents. Every parent out here th seems to think that their kid is the most loving or the smartest. Oh. Some of you are straight, out, uh, straight up out here raising little Indian Menendez brothers and just don't know. At least not yet. You're going to find out. Don't, don't worry. So, um... I'm not what most people would call uh, mentally well. It's fine, I've been this way pretty much my whole life. You see, as this kid, I had this really bad anxiety, and now as an adult, I have this really, really bad anxiety. Admittedly, my topics of worry have shifted quite a bit over time. Like, as a kid, I worried more about things like what kind of flavor of ice cream I was gonna eat that night, or if I could help that nice, strange man in a van find his dog. He offered me candy. It sounded worth it, all right? Now I'm just more worried about things like this upcoming election or the next time my nephew asks me why my eyes are so red and I just polished off his box of graham crackers. That's a weed joke for all of you who didn't get it. That's okay. I used to be pretty anti-drug myself, you know, until I tried drugs. The uh, first time I smoked weed, I realized it wasn't exactly the devil's lettuce that the whole D.A.R.E. program had made it out to be. So with that in mind, I tried everything I could get my hands on. With the exceptions of meth and crack, I had some boundaries, all right? But research chemicals off the dark web, delicious. And I gotta give my mom a little credit where credit's due. That bitch is from Miami, so I'm pretty sure she could like sniff out a drug addict in a 10 mile radius. Honestly, it's probably all those, like, you know, clear sinuses. But she knew. Especially when it was her teenage drug addict daughters. And uh, not to brag, but in the competition of who's a better drug addict, I was winning. What, you drink too much and you smoke a little weed? Call me when you're in the backseat of a stranger's car taking some molly on your way to a trap house. Oh my God. Hell yeah. But um, it always, like, I do remember the first time she found my sister's cigarettes in the attic and made her smoke both packs back to back, one cigarette after another after another, and I don't know, it always really made me disappointed she never found my heroin. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna leave on one more thing. When I was a teenager, I had this best friend who had a mom who, that had something I like to call a magical vagina. It was so magical, she had to quit drinking. But basically, she would date these men, and soon after breaking up with them, they would find fame and notoriety. A few being Sylvain Sylvain from the glamour punk band, the New York Dolls, Chris Nolfe from, who played Mr. Big in Sex and the City, and Ed O'Neill from Married with Children. So I'm thinking, if I fuck her, I can get funny. That's all I got. <laughs> Bonnie Marie, everybody, keep it going for Bonnie Marie. All right, hey guys, come on up. We're, we're clearing, you know, there's uh, space everywhere. There's space up here, there's space over there. Jose is uh, looking for friends. Come sit next to Jose. Jose loves friends. Come sit with them. He says he'll give you a $20 Amazon gift card if you sit with him. Just come sit with Jose. He really. Nope. Nope. All right, Jose, you got to learn how to make friends, man. You got to shed a little money to make friends. All right, your next comic. Is a uh, he's he's an expert in the pay-to-play friendship realm. Uh, he's got a show November third at another round, which is going to be unbelievable. You got to come to that. Everybody, put your hands together for Hopewell's own Pat Logan. Booty yeah. hoop. Um, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard 
to not do all of the whippets in the canister. Um, every time I drive past the vape shop, all I can think about is how they just got these big, huge canisters and they're whipped cream flavored now. And then I get a text on my phone that says it's 25% off your next purchase. I just bought buy two, get one free. I remember the first time I bought Whippets in uh, Hopewell. She didn't know what it was. She, I was like, let me get the nitrous canisters. And she pulls out like a box of rose stems. Those are colorful crack pipes. And I was like, I don't need these. She's like, I'm sorry, baby. Just all these crazy people in here want all these crack pipes. And I just meet a lot of crazy people. I was like, hey, well, you're safe now. It's just me, and I'm here to get nitrous to inhale. Uh, I'm not a big rave crowd. All right. Uh, a recent study says women on birth control are attracted to more feminine men, and women that are not on birth control are pregnant. Uh, I just popped two Plan Bs. Now I got baby fever. Silver, delete this shit, dude. You gotta delete this shit, dude. <laughs> uh, I visited my parents for the first time as an adult. Uh, recently, I, I spent the night with my parents for three nights in a row, and it brought back a lot of memories. Um, as a 34-year-old man, I've gotta say, it was really nice feeling like I was 31 again. Um, Let's see, I work in customer service. A lot of people are assholes, so it's really tough, but every now and then you get a really nice old lady. And uh, I got one recently, and she said, Patrick, you have amazing patience. You should go home tonight and tell your wife that she's lucky to have a husband with such great patience. And guys, when I went home and said that, you should have seen the look on my blow-up doll's face. <laughs> She was not having it, dude. Still got a blowjob. Uh, um, I like shy girls. When you hook up with a shy girl, they might tell you to like turn the lights off. And I'll be like, why? You're beautiful. I want to see you. And she's like, no, turn the lights off. And I'm like, hey, you have nothing to be ashamed of. And they're like, turn the lights off. And I finally realized they want to turn the lights off so they don't have to see me. Um, I don't look this good naked, dude. But with the lights off, I am Jason Momoa. Uh, I imagine that's why she calls me Jason. Uh, I like meeting girls on dating apps because they give you permission to lie. Like I was out with some friends and then later that night, she's like, Patrick, never ever tell anyone again that we met on a dating app. And I'm like, what, are we, what am I supposed to do? She's like, I don't know, make something up, lie. And I'm like, okay, I love you. Uh, you're a great cook. Your sister's not hot. Uh, um, yeah, when I first met uh, this lady friend, she recognized me from doing stand-up comedy. She was like, oh, I saw you at this place. Were you there? And I'm like, yes, that was me. She's like, did you have that bit about therapy and depression? And I was like, no, that wasn't me. Um, but if you saw a guy talking about eating his own cum, that was me. Or Jacob McFadden, or pretty much anybody else. Um, that's now my bit on therapy and depression. Um, I met a girl recently in this room. She volunteered some information to me. She said, uh, I just had my 12th friend die from a fentanyl overdose. And all I could think was, wow, you should hang out with other people. Actually, now you have to hang out with other people. Uh, um, a little safety tip, uh, everyone should have one of these in their car, a window breaker. That's uh, if you like drive off of a bridge and submerge under the water. You can break the window and escape. Uh, there's a new one on Facebook with a money back guarantee. If it doesn't work, God will give you your refund. Uh, that's like selling a parachute with a money back guarantee. That's like selling fentanyl, just in general. Uh, 
Um, for the people at home, there's actually nobody here. I'm just doing this by myself, and uh, I had a great time. <laughs> Give it up for my dad, Jacob McFadden, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> That was so painful to watch because Pat's used to doing well here. Just watching him try and chase the last little lap before I got off stage and just not get there. So disappointing. Uh, Pat's a devious fucker, by the way. This whole, he's got a bit, I like shy girls, and then he's got a punchline about fat tummies or whatever. Right? But the real reason, Pat likes shy girls because when we all hang out, I'm like, hey, Pat, who are you seeing these days? He's like, ah, you wouldn't know her. She's shy. He's a fucking liar, this guy. All right, I'm gonna be like Pat. I'm gonna search for a laugh now for the next 25 minutes. Uh, I, I, I cut my boyfriend's dick while shaving last night. Is that working? All right. Uh, your next comic, uh, he is, um, he's not the showrunner for the Strange Ways Room, but he is the money and influence behind it. Not saying anything else. Put your hands together for Danny McCabe. That's true, that's true. Yeah, money behind it, but I'm not gonna say much about that. Give it up for our host, Jacob McCutdick. I'm sorry, McFadden. <laughs> I got him, I got him, I got him. I wrote that down in the beginning, I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, I don't care when that comes up, I'm just gonna have it come out at the beginning, yes. Oh, shit. But hey, you know, you can always say stuff about me. Uh, it's very easy to make up rumors about me because um, a lot of people have said that uh, I'm the guy who stole Woody in Toy Story. <laughs> it wasn't me, it wasn't me. But yeah, you know, I mean, I love Pixar movies. I love watching TV. Uh, one of my favorite shows that I've seen is uh, The Bear. I think I have uh, the perfect ending for The Bear. Uh, we all find out that they're being ratatouille. I think that's a good. I think that's a good premise. But yeah, you know, I've just been down recently. Um, <clears throat> I've been down because uh, you know, any anyone got work feeling you down these days? Yes. Yeah. 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 Work. Work sucks. Yeah. Work sucks. Yeah. I'm a bartender, so you know, give it up for your bartenders. But you know, it's a. It can be tough at times. The only thing worse is when you're managing that bar as well. And, uh, you know, right now I'm looking for, like, new people. So this guy, he decides to come in, and he was, like, giving his application. And he says to me, he's like, yeah, I think I'll be a good candidate. I'm like, it says nothing on here about bartending, but uh, what do you think makes you think it's a good candidate? Well, I'm fluent in German. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I think that beer has a German name. And I was like, all right, man, we'll give you a call. Oh, it's nuts. But uh, the craziest thing about bartending, I think, is when you're in the middle of a rush, and, like, rushes are, oh, that was a bit of a rush right there, yeah. He rushed all over the floor. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're all good. You're all good, man. I just, I was trying to think of another word where rush would be calm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh shit, but uh, no, give it up for teachers. Um, I've had a lot of teachers in my family. Uh, I really respect teachers. One of my buddies a teacher. Uh, I realized that we've started talking about them the same way like we used to kind of talk about like people in the military. Like it's kind of like a really highly regarded vocation and profession, but none of us want to do it. Yeah. Um, they face a lot of the same problems too, you know, having to get up at 5 a.m. Um, not to mention, uh, shit, uh, you know, worst ethical dilemma, it's always the same thing with both of them. It's a kid with a gun. <laughs> That's a bad one, but, uh, yeah. But you know what's a worse feeling than that, uh, having to hear that joke? You guys ever gone to a, uh, thrift store, right? Donated clothes? You guys ever gone back to that thrift store and your clothes are still there? <laughs> yeah, that's not a fun feeling because you're kind of like searching through the uh, aisles, you know, searching through those circular racks, and you're like, oh, that looks, I had that. 
And then right after that, you know, someone comes up to you and they're like, you finding everything okay? And you're like, I'm not. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. But, um, I, you know, a lot of sh terrible shit happens. A lot of terrible shit happened this week. I've, uh, you guys know, like, uh, those tongue twisters, right? Like, Peter picked and pe eh. Peter picked and, Peter picked and pickled peppers. Fuck, whatever that is, right? Well, I'm gonna attempt another one that I just thought of based off of recent events. Did Diddy dil <laughs> did Diddy the dildo diddler diddle those dildos? Yes, Diddy did. And on that note of Diddy diddling dildos, let's bring Jake and McCutthick, I mean McFadden, back up here. Danny's just jealous because in my religion you get to choose whether or not you cut your dick. Uh, what was it? Uh, Diddy, did Diddy, did Diddy, Diddy dildos? Yes, Diddy did. Was that it? Did Diddy, the. Yeah, take some elocution classes, motherfucker. All right, your next comment coming to the stage. Uh, this set is actually a ploy. I just need her to be distracted for five minutes, and then I'm calling the police and having her arrested for vandalism. I saw you drawing on the wall with a marker earlier. You piece of shit. Your next comic doesn't respect people's property. Put your hands together for Grace Moyer. You caught me. I actually drew all of this. I am schizophrenic. Um, that's cool, that's fun. Um, recently I was trying to make a gynecologist appointment and all of the options were virtual. I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, am I just supposed to describe it to them? They have to take my word for it? I'm like, no, doctor, I didn't say it burns. I said it's fire. <laughs> or like, if that's not how it works, then am I expected to show whole on camera? <laughs> but I'm paying them? <laughs> Something smelling a little fishy. Sorry guys, I'm not a feminist. I'm not, uh, I hate the misconception that feminists are all um, angry gay man haters. Cause really they're just people who believe in equality. And I am an angry gay man hater. <laughs> I've been, I've been trying this new thing lately. Uh, this is a life hack for the two ladies in the room. Uh, if a man is ever trying to talk to you and you want him to leave you alone, you can just scream. They don't like it when you scream. That's, a, that's some advice from me. Uh, Last night, I was walking to an open mic and I heard this lady in her car and um, she was like, do you know any dogs that have a stroller other than you? Do you know any dogs that have a car seat other than you? And I was like, first of all, your dog can speak English? <laughs> like, I know that dogs know like a few words, but like, like this conversation to me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a dog person. Um, like, it's like first, it implies that first of all, her dog speaks English. Uh, second, her dog knows other dogs. And... <laughs> And also like, like talks to other dogs and like compares their living situations. <laughs> and then also that like her dog has like the complex thought to be aware of his privilege 
in comparison to other dogs and the emotional capacity to be like, I really need to listen to my mom and respect what she's saying to me because I have a car seat and my friends don't. Anyways, I don't know. I'm, but then I also, I'm like, I feel like she's expecting things from a dog that I know better than to expect from an adult human man. <laughs> Uh, that's cool. That's a that's a new one. I'm uh, we're figuring out. Um, I think that uh, we should start tricking men into going to therapy. Yeah, um, men in the room, do you go to therapy? I try. <laughs> cool. One of them. <laughs> that's good. Uh, do you guys go to the gym? This is what doesn't work about like telling this joke in like um, a bar at uh, what time is it, Jacob? 1024. 1024 on a Tuesday night in Richmond, Virginia. Um, men don't go to therapy or the gym if they're here. Uh, moral of the story: Imagine if uh, men could go to therapy with one of their bros. Uh, to spot him emotionally, you know, he conquers a really big trauma and his bro daps him up and he's like, good set. And then they slap each other on the butt and then they kiss for like 45 minutes. <laughs> These are just things that I like to think about. <laughs> And um, I've been Grace Moyer. Thanks, guys. Let's hear it for Jacob McFadden. Grace Moyer, everybody. And just to make it clear, I used to go to therapy, and then I married a woman who's just like my grandmother. And now I go to the gym in case she turns into my fucking mother. Uh, all right, so we're going to keep this thing moving, everybody. Your next comedian... Uh, a big proponent of Scottish culture, everybody. An ambassador, if you will. Put your hands together for the original Scotsman, Aberdeen Umbadwala. <laughs> Did he say Scotsman? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Brown people from Scotland. <laughs> that would be a first. Uh, where did this guy go? Prashant. Uh, I just have a comment to make on him that when he said that he was auditioning for Top Gun, and I was like, I saw the movie and I don't think there was any role for any customer service people in Top Gun. <laughs> so. <laughs> and also when he says ISIS, trust me, from an Indian guy, ISIS doesn't sound really scary. Sounds like a next product from Apple. <laughs> okay, uh, that didn't go well. All right, uh, uh, I says okay. Uh, I'll start with a silly joke. All right, we know that uh, Trump got fired. At okay. not not fired. I mean, it'd be like if he got fired, it'd be like the ultimate revenge for all the people he fired on a show, Apprentice. <laughs> that would be like that. But what I found funny is that when his ear got clipped, all right, the first three words that came out from his mouth was fight, fight, fight. <laughs> and I was putting myself in his place. And I thought that when somebody clips my ear, the very first three words that I would say is fine. Fine, like find my ear. <laughs> it's like somewhere down there. I don't think I would have said fine. Uh, okay. Okay. What's this? I can't even read my own handwriting. <laughs> uh, did you guys hear the song? From Adam Levine, it says, if I got locked away and if he lost it all today. You guys heard the song? Kind of. All right. But so the wordings go this way. If I got locked away and if he lost it all today, would you promise me that you will still love me the same? 
So yeah, right there. Yeah. So I'm thinking that this guy is really doesn't know what his priorities are. If he gets locked up, the first question he should be asking is, will you get a good lawyer for me? <laughs> or will you bail me out? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's singing this song for his girlfriend and not his mother. So love should not be on top of his list. <laughs> uh, you guys like uh, self-driven cars? No, right? Even I don't like it. Uh, but I have my own reasons. See, when I drive, I like to talk to other drivers around me, especially in sign language. <laughs> when they make me mad. So, like, say, for example, if a self-driven car just cuts me off, who am I going to yell at? Who am I going to show sign language at, right? Do they expect me to write an email? <laughs> like, hey, Mr. Musk, one of your R2-D2s just cut me off. <laughs> what the hell? And then just write a middle finger emoji? <laughs> I don't think it works that way. I hate self-driven cars. Uh, I like to eat healthy and maintain my weight and all that stuff. But you see, it's not easy eating healthy nowadays. Why? Because healthy food is more expensive than the junk food. So, take for example the avocados. It's a very good healthy food, right? But it is so expensive. I went to the, uh, to the grocery store. I saw that one avocado is equivalent to one bottle of beer. Yeah, it's a dollar each. So guess what I come home with? Six buds, right? <laughs> Not six avocados. See, avocado must be the second most expensive thing or second most valuable thing that Mexico produces. You know the first one, right? <laughs> no, the smoking hot Salma Hayek. <laughs> Thank you guys, that's my time. Thank you so much. Give it up for Abedin Mugwala, everybody. There's a video of Selma Hayek breastfeeding strangers' children on YouTube. And I remember when that happened, everyone was like, check it out, there's a video of Selma Hayek breastfeeding strangers' children on YouTube. And we were all like, shut up, that's weird. I'm going home. I have homework. I'll see you later. Later, guys. But now that I'm a dad, it's actually pretty cool. It's life-giving. Your next comic has never breastfed. Breastfed. Your next comic is selfish with his breast milk, everybody. Put your hands together for the mammary impactful. By the way, your fucking friend better at least laugh at you, man. No, that guy laughs. You're good. You're like, uh, you're like uh, ugly Seth Rogen. I like that. Uh, oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good Seth Rogen impression. Your next comedian, I have to look at his name. Um, your next comedian is named uh, Tapor Leeson. Everybody, Taylor Pearson. This guy's a fucking legend. Give it up, red shirt. Richard, do it! Laugh for him, God damn it! <laughs> uh, feels kind of low-brow to take shots at ugly Seth Rogen when you're short Zach Galifianakis, my guy. <laughs> Alright, anyway, so as the man said, my name is Taylor Pearson. Uh, when I was younger, you know, had a lot more thirst for knowledge and, you know, fucking hope. Uh, I used to ask my dad, hey dad, what does our last name mean? And he would spin this tale about how our ancestors were pear farmers, you know, like, son of pear. He broke it down all etymologically and shit. Ooh, I think I got that right. Yeah. Uh, but turns out, I later learned, that's a lie, because, you know, as an American, our, don't na our names don't mean anything. But I always thought it was a really cool concept. Like, what if people still had their last name for their jobs, right? You're just out here talking, like... Bro, did you see Danny Day Trader just got a new BMW? Like, it looks fucking sick. Like, oh, yeah, and Tommy Tax Evasion just got popped. I heard he's going to white-collar jail. 
Yeah, yeah, that's bad, but Florence Fluzzi has to go see Gary Abortion again for the second time, so fuck, who knows? Anyways, that joke didn't land the way I wanted it to. Uh, it is officially fall, we're in spoopy season, which means the sun is coming down earlier, which means I'm watching a lot of TV, because, you know, mental health. And I've been going back and re-watching the old, early 2000s uh, teen soap opera, The O.C. Is anyone familiar with it? Anyone grow up in that era? Yes, no, might be the wrong room for it, but we're gonna keep going with this joke. Also, side note, I'm pretty sure I'm not gay, but whenever I see Peter Gallagher and those eyebrows, I start to recalibrate things a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> there we go, we're getting back on track. But, uh, you know, Watching that show, like I realized as a middle school or early high schooler, it gave me a lot of unrealistic expectations. In house parties were at some beach with unlimited cocaine, girls running around in bikinis. So then I got to my first high school party, and it's a bunch of Mad Dog 2020 and some sketchy dude trying to sell me a black and mild for a dollar fifty. Like, what the fuck? This is not what I was promised. Along those unrealistic expectations, like, you ever see the dudes they pretend to be high schoolers? Like. These famous actors with the hair, the abs, these kind of dudes who could like successfully seduce the MILF next door and you go, yeah, I believe that. Problem is, that is never who I am, was, or will ever be. But one of the many benefits of being a white dude is you can just believe shit even though all evidence points to the contrary. <laughs> right, so I would be at these parties and inevitably, after a few natty lights and that black and mild, which I did buy for $1.50, <laughs> I'd work my way upstairs into the kitchen where Mrs. Smith would be, and I'd be like, damn, girl, you got some nice crown molding. Have you been doing P90X recently? Also, please remember, this is 2006, so that pickup line is fucking dope. <laughs> and I'm sitting here just leaning, falling, trying to get this woman to throw her life away from me, as if I'm the pool boy down the street and not fucking wearing cargo shorts and clinical strength deodorant. All right, like this is not exactly the kind of person you ruin your life for. But I don't know, high, high school's fun, high school's fun. Um, so I do have a job, which I know is, damn, fucking jobs in the building. Oh, I don't even know where to go with that one. Uh, but so, but I work remotely, which has been very cool. It's got a lot of benefits. You know, you can run your errands, do all that shit, but I've been running into a problem recently where I get on a phone call and someone will be like, hey, can you get on camera? Fuck, I am not ready for this. You know, sometimes maybe I haven't shaved. Sometimes, completely honest with you, home sweet home, I am fully nude. Uh, I have my own house, this is America, and I like to do whatever I want to do. But they tell me I have to get on camera so I can keep my job, so I can pay my bills. And when I do this, I have to get on camera as fast as possible. You know, I don't know if you guys have this situation, but when you said no one believes the excuse, my camera's not working anymore, right? Like that worked the first few months of COVID, but they've got you figured out by now. So what I do to save time is I just throw on a shirt, no bottoms. Just imagine I have to call it the full Winnie Pooh, right? So I'm just kind of like this and now I said, yeah, Tom, you know, I'll get that action item for you. We'll sync up later and uh, we'll touch base later. Oh, bother. All right, that's the end of my set. I'm Taylor Pearson. It was nice talking to you. Taylor Pearson, everyone. Give another round of applause. Guys, just getting started in comedy. Come on, give him a big round of applause. Taylor, I just said that to my work. I said, you gotta turn your camera on. I said, no, nah, I don't do that. I said, why? And he said, I don't do that. If you don't give a reason, it's really hard for people to argue. You go, I don't do it. And if they really come at you, go, I'm Native American. I own my soul stolen. I don't know if I and if you don't, know. don't turn the camera on, they don't fucking know. Jesus what? Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> All the Native Americans have names that you would expect, you fucking racist. A Native American could be named Pearson. Yeah, this guy's a fucking racist. Anyway, speaking of racist, your next comedian. Uh, your next comedian is a fixture in the scene. 
which is what they call all of us who have been doing it since the 2000 single digits, who never amounted to anything and are still here. Give it up for my contemporary, the matronly, Kate Carroll. A plus intro, no notes. Um, <laughs> no, guys. Uh, <laughs> so, um, the other day, uh, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who is just like, oh. Do you, ever guys, do you guys ever have like friends that really love to just push your buttons and when they see that you have like a little soft spot, they just like go in on it really hard? And especially if you're friends with men and you are a woman, oftentimes the argument is, oh, what, are you PMSing? Okay, first of all, um, that's a fucking cop-out. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you why that's a cop-out. So um, part of the reason why that's a cop-out, so uh, here's a little biology lesson, a little basic biology for you, since that seems to be a common term that people love to use nowadays. Um, right before your period, um, there's a thing that happens where your hormones are all in flux and your estrogen is at the lowest level it could possibly be for that time of the month. Which means there's only one other hormone in your system that is regulating your emotions. Can anyone here tell me what that is? It's testosterone, thank you very much. So uh, ladies, if you ever have a guy friend next time who's pissing you off and being like, oh, what are you PMSing? You just say, no, I'm fucking you now. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, God, it's, um, shit's, shit's really fucking weird. It's really weird right now. I, um, I don't even know how I get out of bed in the morning anymore with all the shit that I'm having to look at on the internet and on the news. It's so fucking stressful. But there was one really bright moment of this summer, and I'm certain you guys remember it. It was the uh, Trump assassination attempt. Um, that... <laughs> That was, that gave me a reason to get out of bed in the morning. It really did. Um, and part of the reason why is, uh, <laughs> you know, assassination attempts are kind of like an American tradition. Um, <laughs> so are misusing guns. Um, you know, frankly, if you want to get down to the brass tacks of that guy was using an AR with an iron sight from 500 yards away, there was no way he was going to hit Trump. But I digress. Uh, if anyone wants to talk guns later, I'm a socialist. I believe in a gun. Um, but, <laughs> but no, like, part of the reason why that shit was so absolutely hysterical to me is uh, some of you might know that back in the 80s, there was another assassination attempt on a president's life, um, and that was uh, the Reagan assassination attempt. And um, does, does anyone here know uh, why John Hinckley, the man who perpetrated it, decided to try and kill Reagan? He was trying to impress actress and known lesbian, <laughs> Jodie Foster. And I think that's just so poetic. Um, especially considering the irony of the fact that conservatives are the kind of people that believe that like people choose to be gay. So I was thinking, like, maybe he thought, like, well, fuck, uh, if, uh, you know, if I do this, who knows? I've often theorized, who, what if John Hinckley had been a better shot? Do you think Jodie Foster wouldn't have ended up gay? <laughs> who knows? But I wonder if, like, that was a similar motivation for the guy that tried to kill Trump the first time, like, but here's the thing, who the fuck was he trying to impress in this day and age? Jojo Siwa? Chapel Roan? Dude, he's not, they're not interested. I don't know. Uh, my uh, my father-in-law is a um, dyed-in-the-wool, like, MAGA, like, Republican. So much so that he is, like, an alt-right Twitter personality with, like, 6,000-plus followers. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah, go check. Um, but, yeah, he... Um, at one point when we were visiting him uh, in the middle of a, uh, you know, it was his birthday, my husband had given him a present and he thought that that was an apt time to drop a hard N-word in the conversation. <laughs> Which was a wild thing to see in real time. Uh, you like, <laughs> 
You know in like a movie when you see a plane crash and all of a sudden your ears start ringing? That's what that felt like. And I talked to my husband afterwards after that because I was trying to figure out why that even happened in the first place. And he's like, well, my father's really upset about the lack of representation in the media <laughs> for like Appalachians. And I was like, here's the thing. I, you know, I get it. Appalachians are, are sorely looked over. That is a group of people that are, that for the most part, uh, are of all different backgrounds and have had to really like pull themselves up just to exist. But how the fuck are you going to have representation in the media for Appalachia? Like, he was pissed off about the Little Mermaid being black. Explain to me how I can make the Little Mermaid Appalachian. What, are we gonna make Ursula the fucking Mothman? Are we gonna have the Little Mermaid like running moonshine and stealing copper out of her neighbor's walls? I don't know, it's hard to say. But, um, I... <laughs> But that's my time. Uh, but before I get off, I do want to say um, I'm actually uh, doing a donation uh, drive right now for um, items needed for Southwest Virginia. I know everyone knows about uh, Asheville, but Southwest Virginia in particular has been sorely looked over by a lot of the disaster relief following Hurricane Harleen. I have a donation box downstairs. I also have my number on it. But if you guys are interested in donating to uh, the cause, uh, I am actually going to be doing a, a supply run down there on Friday. So um, thank you for your time, guys. You guys have a wonderful evening. Take care, everybody. Asking the question, how the fuck am I going to make the Little Mermaid Appalachian? I believe the people in Southwest Virginia are under the sea right now. So why are you raising money for them? Guys, let's acknowledge their current situation. I know, and then you pushed out, but I never push out. Also, uh, as the show's ombudsman, I would like to point out that the attempted Trump assassinator used an SKS, which is, of course, the rifle that was replaced by the AK-47, and he rubber-banded a scope to it. So, really, they, uh, just like Trump says, they are not sending their best. Uh, and the final thing I wanted to note on Kate's set, just because we go back on, you know, uh, we go back and forth, Kate and I. Uh, you know, I'm in a Catholic marriage, Kate, so uh, anytime before my wife has a period, there's an outpatient procedure, and then we have a small funeral when it happens. All right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Of course, uh, I love the shows where the only laughs I get are jokes I can never do again. Your next comedian coming to the stage. Everybody. Uh, hey, apparently she used to see me do comedy before uh, I even um, like girls. Uh, everybody put your hands together for Stephanie Moyer. Watch out for Red Shirt Guy. He's a TV. Seller? Yeah. When I went up, great. This is the same thing. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to start a nonprofit uh, to raise awareness for HPV. Um, since athletes are the most affected by HPV, my organization will specifically go to Little League baseball games. Hey, welcome back. Do you wash your hands? Great, great. I believe you. Uh, we will. Uh, God damn it. We will exclusively go to Little League games. Can you imagine the chanting? HPV, HPV. Um, since 80 to 90% of adults will get HPV in their lifetime, I figure if we start with the kids, we can make it a solid 100%. Uh, speaking of HPV, both of my parents are, have been in the dating scene. Uh, my mom mostly dated while married, but my dad dated when I was 13 after his wife died. Yeah, let me tell you guys, people love a widower. Oh man, something about a broken, destroyed man, it makes him real wet, I don't get it. Uh, so he got remarried, and then two years later, she died, and people do not love a double widower. We call him a widower. -er. Uh, one dead wife is tragic. Two is suspicious. Three, you are on a true crime podcast automatically. Uh, he didn't kill them. I just, let me clarify it. 
Uh, he didn't. I've spent most of my life telling people he's not a murderer, so I think that's why I overshare. Uh, he's very grateful that all of his dating was done in the early 2000s before astrology got really big because all of his dates would have gone like this. How did your first wife die? Cancer. How did your second wife die? Cancer. What's your sign? Cancer. It's not a good look. Uh, he used to say that he had the kiss of death, but my brother and I would joke he had the dick of death because they both died of female reproductive cancer. <laughs> Uh, I myself am a single, childless cat lady. I'll hold for applause, thank you. Um, I made a pros and cons list to see if I wanted to start dating now. So pros, I could come. Cons, I could not come home ever again. Folks, I'm real scared of being murdered. <laughs> Statistically, it starts with the first date. Uh, my top three fears are murder, uh, the basement stairs and uh, non weather related notifications from the National Weather app. Like, did you guys know that there could possibly be horse milk and ice cream? Crazy. Why fight climate change when we can do that? Uh, my mom swore I was gay for a really long time. We've had about 15 conversations about my sexuality, which is 14 too many for me. Uh, no matter how many times I've explained it, she's never gotten it, but I finally found what works for her. So I say, Linda, for me, scrambled eggs between the legs. I'm just gonna say a bunch of different vaginal synonyms, here we go. Linda, for me, cooter muffin. Linda, for me, the Twatlantic Ocean is like red velvet cake. It looks great, tastes weird. It's very red, guys. It's very upsetting. Uh, speaking of vaginas, has anyone seen the movie Teeth? Thank you. Great. Okay, well, if you haven't seen it, thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Uh, if you haven't seen it, um, it's a movie about a woman with teeth in her vagina. Great movie. Um, but I want a prequel because I have a lot of unanswered questions. Is that the light? Oh, thanks, I'll be done. Uh, I have a lot of unanswered questions. Um, like, uh, what's she working with, right? Is it a full set? Incisors, molars, canines, is it partial? Uh, did she lose baby teeth? And would those baby teeth work with the tooth fairy? Um, does she need a dentist or a dental dam? I don't know, um, but I do have a good working title for it. It's called Gums. All right, that is it, thank you. Thank you so much. Stephanie Moyer, everybody. Let me turn this back down for myself. Stephanie Moyer. You know, the problem with it is uh, if the tooth fairy does give money for the vagina teeth, he's a fucking misogynist. I bet he only gives 75 cents to the dollar for those teeth. Oh, yeah, the tooth fairy, for sure. Yeah, because he works for a living. Um, well, I could do a fun misogynist joke to follow up on it. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, my goodwill is disappearing. Uh, what did I write down? Nothing. That doesn't help. Um, give it up for Stephanie Moyer, everybody. Come on. Stephanie Moyer. You guys, we're getting down to the end of the show, but boy, we got some great comics for you. Your next comic, this guy is you know how kate carroll's raising money for the uh mountain dew drinking babies of the mountainous west your next comic comes from that stock your next comic is a survivor of the poor whites everybody my personal hero put your hands together for the inimitable tyler bauer I will survive Walk out that door da, 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 da. Home sweet home What's going on beautiful people You lovely people Let's get down to brass tacks here Alright uh, yeah. Nissan Altimas uh, 
Nissan Altimas are pretty wild because I didn't think I'd still be playing with plastic cars as an adult. Little known fact, every Nissan Altima comes with a gun in the glove box with a serial number scratched off. <laughs> Little life hack for you. I feel like Nissan Altimas, if you buy them with a bumper hanging off, they should cost more. Like distressed jeans. They're vintage, guys. Uh, <laughs> Thought, uh, thought, we've heard the term thought used to describe a promiscuous person, right? Thought. Thought stands for that hoe over there, that's right. Thought stands for that hoe over there. But what about the hoe that's been in front of you the whole time? <laughs> that you might not have noticed, but you actually really appreciate them and want to be sweet and cute to them. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. Guys, I remember when I was 13, uh, my parents cut me off from regular soda and switched me to diet. It was crushing a lot of Mountain Dew Code Reds. Uh, like, <laughs> one day I came home from middle school and just crushed like four Mountain Dew Code Reds in 30 minutes, and my dad was like, what the fuck? <laughs> they switched me to diet Mountain Dew Code Reds. They said, we will not have a son with diabetes. But cancer is fine. Uh, I'm not a very athletic guy. The most athletic thing I do is wear a mouth guard to bed. <laughs> I never learned how to grind a rail, but I grind my teeth pretty good. <laughs> home sweet home, I think I'd make a great PR person for celebrities. I think I'd do a great job as a PR person. Because all you really have to do if a celebrity gets into like hot water or gets canceled is just make another controversy to divert from the first one. For example, if I was Dave Grohl's PR rep, uh, Dave Grohl, he got in some hot water. He had a child outside of his marriage. <laughs> That's a wild thing. That's just wild terminology. But if I was Dave Grohl's PR person, to divert from that, I'd just have him do a collab album with Kanye West. Oh, <laughs> Call it the Jew Fighters. Kanye West. <laughs> he said some things about the Jews. Guys, stick with me. <laughs> I think if R. Kelly ever gets out of prison, he should make a pizzeria. He should open a pizzeria. At R. Kelly's pizzeria, all of the pizza is undercooked. It'd be like a 72-part commercial called Trapped in the Walk-In. <laughs> The same beat playing the entire time. It is cool, because, uh, you know, pizza places have been historically used for sex trafficking, so it is on brand. <laughs> People who have survived uh, suicide sometimes get a semicolon tattooed on their arm, because the story didn't end, it continues. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get a question mark tattooed on my arm. I might still do it, you don't know. I might still kill myself. I might jump off of this balcony headfirst into the bar below. That would be crazy, home sweet home. Anyway, uh, <laughs> here's, a, here's a lighter one for you. Do you think at the erectile dysfunction convention, the VIP section stands for very impotent people? Oh, shit. <laughs> Their dicks don't work. Uh, <laughs> I think being a magician with an S&M kink would be hard. Because you could just break out of the restraints, it would be too easy. <laughs> Houdini never came. He had too much pride as a magician. Um, I think the trail of tears could have been a lot chiller if it was the trail of beers. <laughs> it's sponsored by Coors Light. <laughs> they could have got there a lot faster with the bullet train, guys. <laughs> with the Coors Light bullet train. Um, I bought some CBD lotion the other day and I did use it to masturbate. Uh, I couldn't come though, my dick was too relaxed. <laughs> it's back felt too good. <laughs> so to counteract it, I, used, I started using some cocaine lotion that I bought and I started masturbating with that. And my dick was just tiny and small and didn't work. So the last thing I tried, I bought some ketamine lotion. I used that to masturbate. And then I was just like outside of my dick, looking at my dick. It was a real, uh, it was a real trail of tears, guys. Uh, 
I've been Tyler Browner. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm back to your host, Jacob McFadden. Goodbye. Should you love you? Tyler Bauer, everybody. Keep it going for Tyler Bauer. Tyler Bauer is saying the trail of tears could be a lot more chill if it was the trail of beers. Obviously a guy who's never gone drinking on a reservation. After a couple beers, all the fun times you had turn into a blame game, and you're always to blame. As the white guy. Yeah. Believe me, I tried like, hey, don't take our scalps off, and they're like, hey, fuck you. You know, they don't, they don't like it. And then they blame the Chinese for building the railroads. You're like, I'm not sure where I'm responsible for that, but I bet I am. Uh, your next comic has never built a single railroad in her life. And I know that for a fact, because I checked her Wikipedia. Everybody put your hands together for Megan Richards. Oh my God, you guys, that's crazy. I hate railroads. I hate them. Oh, yeah. Bananas. Um, oh my god, what's up, you guys? Yeah. Um, I uh, went on a few dates recently with a guy who calls himself the Pigeon King. <laughs> Are you ever dating someone and you want, like, the bare minimum, but when they have COVID, you, they don't even want to do butt stuff? <laughs> Here's the situation. I rescheduled a date with the Pigeon King because I got sick. And the CDC says if you have flu-like symptoms, oral's off the table, anus is on the menu. Um, so I rescheduled the date and uh, the Pigeon King, he's texted me throughout the day like, how are you feeling? So I'm like, <laughs> oh, you trying to fuck. <laughs> Oh man, but you know, I, I played it cool, I played it cool. Um, it, it, so the Pigeon King, he says, ooh, ooh. <laughs> He's playing coy. He's saying one thing, he means another. <laughs> so I'm like, you think you can just come over here, mask up and parachute landing onto my asshole? <laughs> to protect yourself from infection? <laughs> and he says, no, uh, I really can't risk it. <laughs> but it's the way he texts it, you know. So I, I play along, and I'm like, what am I, just a gaping anus with bangs to you? <laughs> and he stops responding. See, the CDC says... The CDC says five to ten feet, says an asshole quarantine isn't a real thing. But the CD me says, who's gonna rub my back and call me pretty? <laughs> because isn't it a tragic irony that when I'm at my most vulnerable, when I most need to be told how soft my skin really is, I cannot even bribe a man to my home with my own asshole? <laughs> To be clear, I, I didn't want to have anal sex. I was sick. Uh, I wanted a back rub in compies, that's compliments, but I had a sore throat and an asshole. I was looking to barter, looking for a little bit of a trade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I had told my sister that joke yesterday, and she was like, oh, I get it, uh, you were using your asshole uh, for intimacy. And I was like, uh, it sounds really crass when you say it, okay? <laughs> um, but full transparency, my last boyfriend did call himself the Rat King. A uh, pattern is emerging. Uh, I was talking to my brother-in-law last week, though, Michael. I was talking to him, I told him about the Pigeon King, and he was like, do you find them, or do they find you? I guess it's symbiotic in a way, but how? <laughs> how indeed, Michael. Um, you're asking the right questions. Um, it's the other way. You silly, silly, silly girl. Uh, okay. Oh, fuck me, that was a good one. <laughs> okay, we're going back, we're going back. It's the Rat King, it's the Pigeon King. So I consider myself a Pied Piper of sorts, uh, some kind of strange, hot Pied Piper who plays modern folk music and has full-on sex with rats. 
See, I told you guys, I'm like that one. My friend Kirsten, uh, she met this guy recently. It's going so great. Wow, I feel personally transformed. She is siphoning me just daily updates at this point. Just <laughs> uh, and uh, so to catch you up, they fully just met, but they are getting married. And <laughs> I never say that, you guys. I never say that. But it is just going so meatballs, ladies in the tramp, lady in the tramp, um, lady in the tramp meatball scene. That's an iconic scene. That's uh, two dogs one noodle, and it's like this. It's like there's the cocker spaniel, and then there's like the working class hero, and then they're like <laughs> And then these dogs straight up kiss. <laughs> no tongue, no tongue. You guys, dogs literally only kiss with tongue. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> And um, I'll get out of here on this. I'll get out of here on this. So uh, I I did write that that set that little bit about um, Jerry Bear a little bit prema prematurely. Um, the my friend Kirsten she was dating Jeremiah and he did turn out to be just the worst, just the worst. And um, yes, I before they broke up and they did break up. Um, I did get to meet him briefly on FaceTime after he had been fasting for 48 hours for spiritual reasons. Uh, he also doesn't masturbate and he does give off that energy, if you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, and uh, I I'm just gonna reiterate that his name is Jeremiah. So just let your imagination run amok. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> Megan Richards, everybody give Megan Richards another round of applause! Uh, Alright, we're down to our final few comics. By the way, you know, if dogs use tongue to kiss, that's a sign of submission, and you don't want to do that on the first date. It sets the tone for the rest of the relationship. I also, I, I married an Italian girl, so if I tried to eat the same piece of pasta as she would, I would get a fork in the thigh. Uh, what? It's not awesome, it's assault. You piece of shit! You need to learn to respect boundaries and people's physical sovereignty. God damn it, I hate you. You know what? I'm bumping you back on the list. No. Yep, yeah, it's happening. All right, your next comic. He is, uh, he's new, he's new to the scene. This is his first time here. Um, we've done this now with three different comics, but I'm hoping you guys have finally understood that you should be supportive and nice to new comics. And if you aren't, they'll all join a Facebook group that we're not in and then cancel us one by one. I've seen Carrie, that's how it works. Your next comedian coming to the stage, a real devious fuck who can really screenshot all the things you send him, it's Greg Dixon. Don't worry, I don't have Facebook. All right, it's the first of the month. Hope you all paid your fucking rent. All right, but last month was actually Suicide Prevention Month, National Suicide Prevention Month. I don't know if you all knew that. Um, thank God we don't have to be burdened by that responsibility anymore, you know? We can let go of that. I think I prevented four suicides myself last month. Um, just, my, just my own. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah. People say it's people say it's taking the coward's way out. Have you ever heard that? It's like taking the coward's way out, like killing yourself. But I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty scared of like shooting myself in the head with a gun. That sounds pretty <laughs> fucking scary. Like it's probably one of the scariest things I could ever do. I feel like it's actually pretty courageous, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, speaking of wanting to kill myself, uh, I went to my cousin's cookout last weekend, and. Uh, <laughs> So the first thing her mom says to me is, why are you so skinny? Why are you so skinny? And I was just like, why are you fat and wrinkly, bitch? Like, <laughs> it's I actually didn't say that because like, then she'd just be like, well, because I'm old. And it's, what I just said was, hi, how are you? Um, That's polite. <laughs> yeah, but what I, what I told her was, you know, actually I went to the doctor uh, for the first time last week and, um, because, you know, I'm so skinny. And they're like, I don't know how to tell you this, but 
you have AIDS body. Oh. I was like, what, what does that mean? You saying I have HIV? They're like, no, but you look like it. We like, mainly, we mainly just look for AIDS. And, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's hard dating with AIDS body. Um, <laughs> you know? I'm like, are you looking for somebody who looks sick, but doesn't have the appreciation for what a short, precious gift life is? <laughs> or are you looking for somebody that you can be mistaken for their caretaker? Because it's quite right. Um, so I went, to, uh, I went to Ipanema last night. And, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I haven't been to that part of town in a while. Uh, actually, like, I don't really hang out down there that much ever since the protests. Since uh, George Soros gave me 50 bucks to throw a brick through the Panda Express. Um, yeah, so I try to lay low around there. Speaking of parts of town, um, I think the Shaco Bottom is appropriately named, because if I was going to rank the parts of Richmond, it would definitely be at the bottom. Um, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather work a clan recruitment... Uh, I'd rather work a clan recruitment booth in Gilvin Court than never go in Shanae's ever again. <laughs> um, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, going in Shanae's is not a good idea. It fucking sucks. Um, so I've been thinking about AI recently. I'm like, am, what am, am I going to get left? Am I going to get left behind? Not Alan Iverson. I mean, when he crossed up Jordan, but um, like. I'm like worried about like getting left behind by the AI, you know? And um, so I, I heard this ad on the radio about, we have non-hallucinating AI. I'm like, I don't really know what that means, but it seems like a good thing because the other day I walked in on my chat GPT and it was trying to boof ketamine. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this guy who was going around recent, uh, like a couple months ago. He was trying to abduct children in the area. It was like a white male in his 40s uh, in a red truck. Uh, he chased after the kids like multiple occasions and tried to get, and on both occasions they got away. And I was like, wow, that's pretty fucked up. Like there's a grown ass man going around getting absolutely stunted on by fucking fourth graders. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, yeah, these kids are out of his league. Like, I think at some point, like, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and uh, kidnapping kids is probably a little bit like dating. You have to lower your standards a little bit, you know? Start going for the fat ones. Or the ones who are already beat down by life already. All right, with bad credit. And, um, yeah, on that... <laughs> All right, on that note, I'm going to give it back to Jacob. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I ain't afraid to shake your hands, AIDS body. All right, everybody, give it up for Greg Dixon. I don't know if Greg Dixon did better than all the newbies, but you should definitely take this tape to the comedy class and rub it in their fucking face. Um... By the way, just so you know, uh, as, a, as a teenage heroin addict, you should go with Train Spotting and not Dallas Buyers Club. You'll get more chicks that way. Yeah, you don't have to know how to play guitar. You just have to hold it. And then your tiny, with your tiny body, it holds itself. All right, your next comedian coming to the stage also has a tiny body. Everybody, put your hands together for the number one AIDS body in the city, Sabet. Hi. I'm so honored to have the number one AIDS body. I always wanted to be in Rent. Oh, guys, I hate... Uh, <laughs> I have... Uh, will you light my candle, Jacob? That was a little too sexy. Oh. Yeah, I was like, I regret saying that. I... <laughs> um, I hate the sensation of things blowing on me. Uh, ceiling fans, I'm considering taking it out of my wall. I really don't like it. Um, I don't, no, I messed that up. I was gonna say, I was trying to think of, is it funnier to say that I do like getting eaten out or I don't like getting eaten out? Um, I used to not like it and now I do. I used to think that it was kind of like boring, um, but then it turns out when someone's good at it, it's like so interesting. Um, yeah. I've been trying this new sort of like power play thing 
And if you ever really want to know someone's true character, uh, what you should do is write a note, and on that note, you should write, <laughs> I heard you have a really huge fat cock, and then just like slip it to them, and like watch them as they look at that note. I've done this, so I know how it goes. Uh, and they kind of like choke and stuff, and you're just like, <laughs> you're like very self-satisfied, because like, uh, sometimes they'll say things like, who told you that? Uh, <laughs> which means they're sleeping with one of your friends. Uh, or they'll say something like, uh, uh, and they get like all flustered and they can't really say anything, which means uh, they have a small penis, so you probably shouldn't talk to them anymore. Um, you can also do it with like, you know, other genders too. Um, Probably the only one you shouldn't do, though, is trans women. That probably doesn't work as well. Um, that can be transphobic, uh, which is no bueno. Don't like that. Um, I pretended to be gay in high school. I just thought that. Um, I, I pretended to be gay for attention before it was cool to do that. Um, it was just for one day. I was in the Gay Straight Alliance. Uh, and I was the S of that alliance, uh, but we went off campus to like meet other, mostly G's. And I was feeling really left out at this conference where like everyone was coming out in this big circle and they were like, I'm gay. And like, I can't not have the spotlight for one second. Like I'm dressed the way that I would dress when I had to do a shift as a techie, as an actor, just like moving set pieces like, oh, don't let like the, the light shine on me while I'm supposed to be here anonymous, like behind this other actor having a monologue, you know? Um, any who's a what's up, what was I talking about, about liking attention? Um, you guys can just stand here and look at me, I'll be just as happy being gay, thank you. Yeah, so I obviously came out, uh, cause I needed like two seconds just to prove myself worth to these other gays. Like still, I'm just like still trying to, like as long as gay people approve of me, I'll be cool, you know? Like enough, you can just like suck a guy's dick and he's fine, but like gay people, they really know stuff and they're smart and uh, I care what they think about me really a lot. <laughs> and uh, I'm blushing, I blush for gays, for boys, I'm like, I heard you have a big dick, bleh. <laughs> for, for gays, I'm like, <laughs> um, laughing at something that's like not even funny and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I just pour the smoothie on myself, I guess. Or slushies, isn't that what they did? They slushied people in Glee. Um, yeah, hot. Uh, yeah, being gay, I did pretend to be gay. And then at the end of that conference, there was a photographer who went around and took photos of everyone who identified as anything other than 100% straight to put those photos up on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., where I am from. So they wanted to just put all the fucking gay kids out there for their parents to like laugh at or something? I don't know. Um, but uh, I had to then go, I couldn't out myself as straight. So I went and got my photo taken. And if this were a technology savvy open mic, I would throw that photo up onto the screen right now. I will give you a preview of it right here. I know, right? Interesting choice. Uh, yeah, I was trying to look gay. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, and you can buy a t-shirt and that the photo is now in a coffee table book as well. You could order the print online. Uh, see me after the show for the deets. I'll get it for you. Um, and I think I'm just gonna say goodbye. Bye bye, yeah. love you. Sabet, so everybody. And I just wanna defend my, this is a technology savvy open mic. Just a venue isn't. Personally, I have a cassette in my player that connects to Bluetooth. That's, that's a joke from 2006, and I bumbled the word, so it didn't work. All right, we have one comic remaining, and then I have like four people who dropped out. So I'm of two minds. Either I end it and go home and take care of my wife, or I take the people who are new to comedy, who are still hanging around, force them to come on stage and play sex with me is like while the rest of us watch. What do you guys think? 
Oh, uh, sex with me is like so. It'd be Elena, Stephanie Moyer, Taylor Pearson, Greg Dixon. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, you went first. You should never go first. Uh, all right, we'll have fun with that, everybody. But first, your next comedian, and we'll put Damien up there too, because uh, Damien um, always uh, gets confused and, and loses himself. Uh, your next comedian. I said I was moving him back, and I didn't. But uh, you know, Brian Fontaine is an incorrigible drunk and didn't show up. Your next comedian. Neither did Monty, by the way. So maybe he's relapsing. I don't know. Your next comedian. And by the way, just so we're clear, Mukazo didn't show up either. Uh, your next comic coming, and by the way, just so, all right, I'll stop naming people. Your next comic coming to the stage. I have heard this guy has an eight inch dick, but an inch and a half of it is just skin that didn't get cut off as a child. It's just all hiding back behind that shield. Is that your interest? Is that what you're into? Oh, I don't know. I just, I, I, it was a hat that threw me out. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Uh, your next comment coming to the stage. <laughs> it's weird to accuse a random guy of being into uncircumcised penises. Your next comment coming to the stage. By the way, completely uncircumcised. They call him the Smegma King, everybody. Put your hands together for Damian Anderson. I didn't know who the fuck he was talking about. How y'all doing tonight, guys? Y'all doing good? Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. I don't know. Anybody single in a relationship in here? Yeah, I don't know. Which one, nigga? Is that your relationship? Oh, yeah, good for you, good for you, good for you. I'm clearly fucking single. I don't know. It's cr it's weird, because like, I have a lot of like a girlfriends. All right, straight dudes in the audience. Straight dudes in the audience. That means... You remember that like magical moment you had, you know, when you realized women were human beings as well? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. So I have like a lot of like friends that are girls and they will vent to me about their relationship shit, right? And like a lot, a lot of shit they say, they'll be like, I just want a guy that's obsessed with me. And then I'm always like, I don't think you know what that means. Like, let's ask Nicole Brown how that went. Let's ask Nancy Benoit how that went. I don't know. That, that, that nigga's gonna kill you, is what I'm saying. Like, that you don't want a guy that's obsessed with you. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I'm clearly, I'm clearly single, like, obviously. And I've decided not to date until I get my, like, life together and my shit together. But, like, I, you know, I was curious one day, meaning I was drunk and alone. So I re-downloaded, like, Bumble or some shit, right? The first girl I see is, like, the queen bee from my high school. Like that was the first girl, you know, you know the queen bee, you know, the hottest girl in your school, but that's like bragging about getting fucked by a grown man for some reason. <laughs> like, I feel like you're abused, but like, okay, go off queen, go off, go off. Like I saw her profile come up first and like her bio said, postpartum, two kids. Yes, that is my husband in the picture. Yes, he is aware. And I'm like, oh, fucking gross. So I, I, I swipe right. I swipe right after that. I swipe right. I have no shame. I have no shame. I don't know. I'm just looking for my shorty, you know? He agreed with you and ran away. I didn't actually swipe right. He scares me. <laughs> but um, what was I talking about before you even know? All right, anyway. Like, I just want to find my shorty, you know what I mean? I just want to find my shorty, you know? You know, we go on the first date, everything's working out, we're cooling, you know, we're about to make love for the first time, she's feeling me, and then right before we start, she looks me in the eyes and goes, man, see, you gotta fuck me like this to make me come, see? You gotta fuck me hard like this to make me come, see? Hey, I'm about to come right now, see? And then we, you know, we get married and have kids together, you know, they talk like 20s gangsters for some reason. Like, I don't know what's going on. I was... <laughs> I, having a crush as a guy in general is weird. Can we admit, fellas? Like, I don't know. Like, a, you know what I mean? You'd be at, like, you know, out at the bar or some shit, and, you, like, usually, you know, masculine, you have to act masculine for some reason, for dumb reasons, like a guy steps on your shoe. That's, like, black people problems. I don't know about y'all. But, like, <laughs> like, a nigga step on your shoe, and you gotta be like, nah, nigga, what's up? What's up, bro? What's good? But then later you see your crush walk in, right? And you gotta look at your boys and do this shit. You'd be like, do you guys think she likes my fit? 
Do you guys, 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 do you guys think that when she walks past me and smells like a whiff of my cologne, that she like daydreams about a life together and then about, you know, our full future together, it gets to our grandchildren when we die alone. Of course, I don't think that. I don't do that shit, I'm a man. I hold my feelings in until I lash out at my loved ones that actually care about me. <laughs> Like a real nigga, like a real nigga would, like a real nigga would. I don't know. I don't know. I'm agnostic, guys. Like, I feel like if you can't live, like, in this, you know, in the situation we're in as Americans with all the information we have, like, I don't know, every living being doesn't actually know what happens. So, like, that's why I'm agnostic. I just, in me being agnostic, I figured out that human beings are the douchebags of the animal kingdom. Because no matter what, we give ourselves way too much credit, both atheists and like, you know, religious people. Cause I don't know, I just feel like we're both interpreting it wrong. Like Christians think God loves him, like God loves us, right? And I'm like, I don't think we read the same book. Like that nigga sent the flood down like he was resetting a sin save. Like that shit was crazy. <laughs> like, I don't, like at least in ancient Greece, like they didn't worship that nigga out of, or their gods out of love. They worship them out of fear, clear, rightfully so. Like, I don't know, like, Zeus was a fucking menace. Like, that nigga was out here having children with every human woman on the planet while being married to his sister, by the way. They were all incest and like wanted to fuck you, like they were married to their sisters and shit. Like, and, but he was still horny enough to go to Earth to fuck other women. He turned himself into an animal multiple times to do that. He didn't have to do that. Like, they would have fucked him anyway. He's fucking Zeus. Like, that's, like, that's some shit. You know how Christians be like, they made us in our image. Like, now I believe it because, like, that's some shit Diddy would do. I don't know. I don't know, but that's been, my name's Dan, that's been my time. Damian Anderson, everybody. I don't believe all that Zeus shit. I think if you're just a Greek woman, you go down to wash your clothes in the river and you get raped by a goose, you're like, nah, that was Zeus. That was Zeus. I happened to me, it was Zeus, it was a god. That's a funny joke when you're not a woman. Um, I do like how Damian's whole set is premised on the fact that like, do you know women have their own emotions and feelings? That's wild. The only people who are laughing are the ones who listen to Damien said. Uh, all right, I think we're gonna do this. I think this will be fun. I'm gonna call up a couple of people uh, to do, it's an improv game. It's good for joke writing, just to see you guys have to sweat. Let me get Taylor. Come on. Give it up for Taylor. We'll only do it for a couple minutes. Taylor, can you read that for me into the microphone? Nope. Read it into the microphone, dummy. Uh, there's nothing, nothing on here, my brother. I know, I picked the wrong card. Uh, let me also get Stephanie. Let me get Damien. And let me get Greg. And then, uh, Elena, do you want to do it? No, Elena doesn't want to do it. Okay. And Damien doesn't want to do it either, but he's already up here. Do you want to do it? Come on. Anyone else want to do it? Anyone in the audience want to do it? It's a simple game. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy improv game. They do it at a bunch of shows. It's called Sex With Me Is Like. And what you do is you come out with a joke quick. Someone give me a suggestion. Sex with me is like, someone in the audience, give me a suggestion. And, what we're, and by the way, what we're gonna do, guys, I'm gonna leave the mic here, and so Silver doesn't have to keep chasing us around. We're gonna leave the mic in the stand. It's always sex with me is like. Uh, we're gonna leave the mic in the stand. You're gonna walk up to it, leave it in the stand, and say the thing. Someone give me a suggestion. Concrete. Uh, sex with me is like concrete. Uh, oh, I got it. Okay, you want to, oh, wow, all right, go for it. Sex with me is like concrete, which you put your finger in it, it leaves a lasting impression. <laughs> he nailed it. That is great. All right. So you guys get the concept, right? And, uh, and just remember, um, have fun, and we're all judging you. All right. Sex with me is like concrete is the prompt. Just walk up when you're ready, guys. Come on. Don't be shy. Sex with me is like concrete. Nah, just walk, like, get on it. I mean, really, like, yeah, yeah. It's like concrete. It's uh, hard, and when you hit it, you die. <laughs> Don't want to fall out of the window on top of Greg. Sex with me is like concrete. It's wet at first, and then when it dries up, it's completely dry. All right, that is factual. 
And we didn't get your name. What's your name, my man? I'm Alex. That's Alex. <laughs> Sex with me is like concrete. Nobody has invested in the infrastructure in decades. <laughs> That's true. We had a debate about it tonight. Let's get another suggestion, everybody. Sex with me is like what? Ice cream. Sex with me is like ice cream. Sex with me is like ice cream. Good when you start, but it melts quickly. Sex with me is like ice cream. I like vanilla. <laughs> Sex with me is like ice cream, I like chocolate. <laughs> we got an ambient honor in here, that's awesome! Let's get another suggestion, we passed that one, another suggestion. Sex with me is like what? Butter Russia. Sex with me is like Soviet Russia. Butter 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 in Soviet Russia, sex watches you. That's true. Oh, oh, oh. Sex with me is like Soviet Russia. It's almost kind of slavery. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's an anti-communist message, but I know Taylor's got one. I am not He's got a gold medal on this guy. Hate hates communism. Come on, Taylor. Step up to the mic. Also, like people at home, like I don't only fuck white women. I just want to make sure that it is. <laughs> I a better one. Sex with me is like Soviet Russia. There are thousands of red flags. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 Sex with me is like Soviet Russia. You're putting it in there. Sex with me is like a school shooting. It shouldn't involve kids. Sex with me is like school shootings at black schools. This is called gang violence. <laughs> Sex with me is like school shootings. I wish Michael Moore filmed that shit more often. Hell yeah. Sex with me is like school shootings. After it happens, you'll forget about it. <laughs> Sex is me. Wait. Sex with me is like school shootings. That shit didn't happen when I was in high school. <laughs> All right, guys, we're getting, this is getting good. We're getting warmed up. Give me another suggestion. Flying an airplane. What's that? Flying an airplane. Sex with me is like flying an airplane. Sex with me is like flying an airplane. You have to have at least three or four cocktails before you do it. Come <laughs> on. All right. Um, sex with me is like flying me in an airplane. I've only done it once. Sex with me is like flying an airplane. The girl normally just watches a movie for all two and a half hours. Uh, uh, two hours? I mean, it's not good. <laughs> Come on, Greg, 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 Greg. All right, sex with me is like flying an airplane. I trust somebody else to do it better than me. <laughs> sex with me is like flying an airplane driven, flown by Snoopy, because it's doggy style. Sex with me is like lunchable pizza. You wish it was hot. Sex with me is like lunchables. There's plastic involved. Sex with me is like lunchables. My Christian parents never let me have it. 
sex with me is like lunch bowls better if there's a Capri Sun at the end. <laughs> sex with me is like Lunchables because dicks smell like baloney. <laughs> Sex with me is like Hurricane Helene. I myself didn't even know it happened. To be honest. With you. He's also a victim, just like the people of Appalachia. <laughs> Sex with me is like Hurricane Helene. You didn't even know you could get wet there. Sex with me is like Hurricane Helene. It, it leaves you stranded in the mountains. What? Sex with me is like Hurricane Helene. It mostly happened to white people from the southeast. <laughs> that, that's not true. That's not true. Greg, you got something? Come on, Greg. Uh, sex with me is like Hurricane Helene. You'll see about it on the news because it was a crime. <laughs> What's your name again, my man? Alex. Alex. Give it up for Alex. Didn't even perform tonight, man. Just jumped up here and did it. All right, give it up for everybody. Come on. Stephanie, Alex, Damien, Taylor, and Greg. Guys, what a night we've had. What a show this has been. Thank you so much for coming out. We're all going to hang out, have a couple of drinks on the porch afterwards. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you.